Well, hello, family. It's Monday, 714, our prayer focused devotional. I'm excited to be here with you this evening. And uh, I pray that you guys have had an awesome day on today. It's been a little hectic trying to get on. This is my first time uh, being on uh, Facebook, so I had to try to get it together. But God got it together. Let's give him the glory. So anyway, we want to talk about today. We want to talk about, hello, Mary. We want to talk about the good, the bad, and the redeemed. We're going to come out of Matthew 5, 43 and 44. And this is the NIV. Hi, Ebony. Hi, Don. This is Jesus talking. He says, you have heard that it was said, love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I tell you, love your enemy and pray for those who persecute you. That's deep. Did you hear that? Jesus said, pray for your enemies. Do we always do that? We want to make sure that we do. So here we go. The good, the bad, and the redeemed. You see, when I think about good and bad, I see it everywhere. I see it in movies. I see it on soap operas. I see it on the news. And I even see it in fairy tales. I first discovered that when I was a child. I used to like fairy tales and I read a lot of them. And I started to see a pattern. Hmm. Good and bad. Now let's take a couple of those stories. Now there's Cinderella. Some of you may know that story. It was about the beautiful, lowly Cinderella who had an evil stepmother, just mean to the bone. And then there was Peter Pan and Fairy t and a uh, Tinkerbell. And then there was that old mean Captain Hook. And then even in The Wizard of Oz, everybody loved Dorothy and Toto. But then there was that wicked witch of the West. You know, when I think about villains, my blood starts to boil. I don't know about yours. People who just do people wrong, oof, it just bothers me. But I started to do some thinking. What if you knew a little bit more about the villain. What if I gave you a backstory? Hi, Kanika. What if I told you that Cinderella's evil stepmother was married before and that she was married to a very abusive husband who abused her and her daughters? What if I told you that Captain Hook was born prematurely, without a hand. And as he grew up, kids ridiculed him. They were mean. They were just so evil to him. And as years went by, he grew evil and mean and decided he was going to live a life of piracy. And what if I told you that the wicked witch of the West, she was a beautiful child and her mother entered her in pageants. She was in commercials and she was even in movies. And then one day she was in a terrible car accident and it left her disfigured. And the surgeon said there was nothing that they could do. She went back to the industry in hopes of some type of job, and they said, hmm, thank you for what you've done, but we won't be able to use you ever again. That's pretty harsh. Now, does that give you a different view of those villains? 
Would that change your mind about those people? Well, that brings me to current day, real life. We've all encountered some people like that. We've encountered some people in our lives that are just rough around the collar. And we don't always know why. Haven't you seen that woman in the store that you smile at and she rolls her eyes? And you walk around the section and you see her again and you say, oh, hi. And her lips are tight. Oh, we've all experienced that. And then there are the people who just get so hostile with you. You can be talking with them for a moment and the next thing you know, they're raising their voices. They're upset. And you don't even understand what's happened. Those things do happen. There are the people that you meet, say even at church, and they're very withdrawn and they're quiet. You guys set up a little lunch date. They don't show up and they don't even call. So what all these people have in common? My first point is rejection. Rejection. And so that's just heavy to me. Haven't you been rejected? I've been rejected and it's nothing nice. Rejection hurts. It's a pain that is deep down and it hurts. It makes you just want to sometimes feel like you want to throw in the towel. What good is it to keep trying when people continue to reject you? But what I want you to think about, do you know that they rejected Jesus? He was in his hometown. And you know those people. Who? Jesus? Oh, he was the one. He was in the temples. He was doing this. He was born... He was a carpenter. Really? He's the Messiah? Sometimes people, they don't even know what they're doing. And sometimes we buy into it. So rejection can hurt. And rejection leaves you usually two choices. Either you'll go to yourself, you know, you'll just kind of withdraw from everybody. Or you will take revenge. How many of you know that a lot of people who are hurt become revengeful? They may think revenge. They may say, I am going to get you back. No matter what it takes, I'm going to do it. No matter what you've done, I'm going to do it to you. And sometimes, like in the fairy tales that I told you about, the evil stepmother, she wasn't getting back at her ex-husband, but yet she was taking it out on Cinderella. There are times when we do that. And we're not meaning that, but we just want to release that rejection that we felt. We want to put it on somebody else. We want to harm somebody else. We want to hurt someone else. But you know, that's not God's way. That is not God's way. God said, love your enemies and pray for the ones that persecute you. Sometimes that can be tough. Sometimes that can be hard. But all things are possible with the Lord. There may be someone who's watching who has actually been rejected and felt like they wanted to take out revenge on someone. But you know, when you think about it, when it's all said and done, what everybody truly needs, they need love. They need real love. That is the third point, real love. When you've been rejected and when you feel like you want revenge, what you really need is real love. The real love of a father. A father who gave his only begotten son to die for you and to die for me. That is absolutely amazing. And I'm just so glad that he loved us so. We serve a good and mighty God. He's good and mighty, y'all. And so there's a song that is called God Only Knows. 
God only knows what you're going through. God only knows what they say about you. God only knows the real you. There's a kind of love that God only knows. It's by for king and country. And the kind of love that God knows is unconditional. We all need an unconditional love. Amen. And we talk about love all the time, but do we show it to those Christians who are tough and hard to love? Those ones who say some things that can cut us, hurt us. Do we continue to love them and not talk about them? It's not always easy, but it's what God desires for us to love them. We have to love them with everything that we have. We serve an amazing God. You know, love, love is a little bitty word, but love is a powerful word. Love has the power to heal. Love has the power to save. It conquered death and the grave. Love has the power to forgive. And love has the power to correct. Aren't you glad that we serve a God whose love is perfect? You know, he looks low, but he sits high above. And each one of us need to continue to show everybody his unconditional love. Amen? Amen. We've got to do that. That's what we're here for. And you know, even though we were talking about the people that were the evil ones in the story, you know, we didn't really talk about Cinderella, Peter Pan, Tinkerbell, even Dorothy. You know, Pastor on yesterday, he talked about the people who look like they have it good and all together and they got the perfect little life. Well, we need to introduce them to Christ as well. Because sometimes they may look like they know the Lord or acting the part, but sometimes they may just be playing a game. So we want to extend that invitation to them as well. You may know some people at your job, um, at church, um, maybe that comes on Winsome Wednesday, but we want to extend those invitations to them. Everybody needs Christ. He will change your entire life. I know many of you guys can testify to that. God is good. Where were you before Christ? Woo, some people say, I don't want to know. But you know, that backstory, for us, that's our testimony. And that's what draws people to Christ. Just being honest with where we've been and where we're headed with Christ. Christ is an amazing God and there's nobody like him. Trust and believe it. Trust and believe. Amen. Love can drive out hate and love is. God is love. Amen. Love can cover a multitude of sin. Love is huge. And God has so much of it and he wants to pour it out on us. And all we have to do is accept. You can confess with your mouth that Jesus was raised from the dead, that God raised him from the dead. If you believe that, I tell you what, you can be a part of the family, a royal family. Sharing your testimony is so impactful, so impactful. And we want to do more of it. And yes, we want to do it with our friends and our family. But you guys, sometimes it's good to do it to people that you don't even know. And you'll be surprised that sometimes they will say yes. They, they will say yes to Jesus. Just give it a chance. Give it a try. We're coming up on uh, April the 13th, Sharing the Savior. We're getting ready to do some different techniques and different things about how to share the Savior if you're not really sure. So that's going to be a great day. And so we just want to continue to share the Savior with everyone that we know. God is good and God is great. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we just come to you as humble as we know how, Lord, saying thank you. 
Thank you for every single thing that you've done, Lord, all that you continue to do. There may, there may be someone under the sound of my voice who has been rejected, who has had revengeful thoughts, Lord. And we just pray that they have come to a saving knowledge of who you are, Lord, and you have changed their life complete. And maybe someone has not accepted your invitation, Lord. And they want to give their heart to you right now, Lord. Let them do that this very minute because tomorrow is not promised, God. All we have is today, God. And you are a faithful God, a just God. And you will protect them even when it feels like they are being rejected. When they are hurting, you will comfort them, God. We love you and we thank you for every single thing that you've done, God all that you continue to do. You're a mighty God, and we say thank you. In your son Jesus' name we pray, Lord. Amen. Amen. That's good. Thank you for coming out to listen. Um, I appreciate that. Um, it's Monday, 714, and we hope that everybody has had a good evening. And I want to say good night. Thank you.